Good afternoon, everybody. Now, as you know, it is Father's Day. And as was pointed out earlier on, I took the message just a few weeks ago when it was Mother's Day. Uh, well, as you can imagine, the message needs to be slightly different. Uh, the focus was upon mothers a few weeks ago. The focus is upon fathers this afternoon. But actually, the core of the message is the same. Because we are going to talk about God's love, the Father's love. And we're going to talk about how that is so important to us, essential that we respond to it. I trust that you have had a good Father's Day, uh, whether that is in receiving presents or giving presents. But of course, we must be mindful that for some, today isn't perhaps a special day or perhaps it's a difficult day. There is a friend of some of ours uh, who has recently passed away. And for his family, today will be a difficult day. It'll be a day of sadness, but perhaps also mingled with joy as they remember those happy days, those happy moments. Just a couple of weeks ago, I came across a story reported on BBC News and the local news on television, uh, which quite touched me. And I just want to remind you of it. I'm sure you saw something of it. Uh, the headline was St. Dogmail's Drowning. And just a couple of weeks ago, the, headline, the, the article went on to say, a man drowned after rescuing two children who got into difficulty in a riptide at Poppet Sands in Pembrokeshire. The police were called when they saw these swimmers in difficulty as the man entered into the waters. He rescued two children who otherwise would have died. But the article goes on to say that the 47-year-old man died after being recovered from the sea. Just a little while later, the family of that man, through the police, gave a statement. It said this, He was a hero. Despite our pain and grief, it gives us comfort to be self that he selflessly tried to prevent the death of others. He was a devoted and loving father. At any time of the year, that's poignant. But actually today, it's especially sad, isn't it? I don't know about that family, I don't know that man. But we'll know that there is a family there in West Wales that's grieving the loss of a husband, of a dad. The article goes on to say that he was loved and respected by all who knew him. When we hear stories about that, we're marked by, we're, we're, we're challenged by the bravery of some. What might you have done if you had been walking along the sands there, uh, along the beach, and you had seen some in difficulty? Would you have called out? I'm sure you would. Would you have entered into the water? Perhaps not. Mindful of your own um, inability, perhaps to help. Perhaps you can't swim. Perhaps you would have been overcome by fear. No one would condemn you for that, would they? But this man went in. He put himself into danger. And through his bravery and the giving of his life, two children were saved. Bravery, selflessness, love. Perhaps. He may well not have not known them. They weren't his own children. But surely an act of love towards strangers nonetheless. 
It's a remarkable story. It's a touching story. It'll stay with us, no doubt. He gave that which was most precious to him, his life, to save others. Perhaps you can see where I'm going. The Lord Jesus himself said, Greater love hath no man than that a man lay down his life for his friend. Those words would apply to this man that gave his life for strangers. They would apply to those that have given up their lives in other circumstances, maybe for the good of their country in war. But the Lord Jesus principally was talking about himself. For he knew that in just a little while he would give up his life. For all those around him. There is a slight difference. There are a number of differences of course. But there is one difference. That man and others that have given their lives in acts of bravery. Did not have the intention of dying in their acts of rescue. They would all have gone into the danger. Perhaps knowing that that was a possible outcome. But not one that they wanted. Not so with the Lord Jesus. To help us. And we'll come on to the way in which he sought to help us. And why he needs to help us. And how we can be helped. But to help us. To love us. He died for us willingly. Knowing that he was going into death. He knew everything about that death that would come. He was able to describe it to his disciples. He was able to describe the torture that he would undergo. He was able to describe the nature of it. He went into it with full knowledge. He knew he was to die. Greater love hath no man than that a man lay down his life for his friends. Of course, another difference is this. The Lord Jesus, in knowing that he would die for our sakes, also knew and told his disciples repeatedly so before he even arrived at Jerusalem that on the third day he would rise again. Knew that he would die. Knew how he would die. But knew that he on the third day would rise again to life eternal. One of Jesus' disciples is John. Here, 12, of course. One of them is John. He's often called the beloved disciple, often because of the, the closeness that he seemed to have with the Lord Jesus. Perhaps also because when John wrote some letters to fellow Christians many years later, one of the key words of his writings is the word love. He saw love in action, in the life of the Lord Jesus, in the death of the Lord Jesus. He wrote about love. In fact, in 1 John, the first letter of John, and chapter 4, he makes a bold statement about love, a bold statement about God. He says this, God is love. Now, you may have many misconceptions or, or ideas about who or what God is. But this is what the Bible says. This is what those that believe in him say. God is love. It's a remarkable statement to make about God, isn't it? Um, you might say that somebody is lovely. You might say that they're loving, that they do lovely things. But John's going way beyond that. He's saying, God is love. And in fact, 
if you were to read that first letter, which is, which is absolutely full of the idea of love, God's love, you discover so much about why God, why John thinks God is love. But actually, I'm just going to share with you three further verses from that letter which tell us why John thinks God is love. He says, he's not only stating it, he's evidencing it. Listen to these phrases. In this was manifested, shown the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. And here again, here in his love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Propitiation, the means by which we can be appeased, forgiven of our sins before God. And again, the Father sent the Son to be the saviour of the world. There's three ideas that tie those verses together. Yes, love. But the idea that God sent his Son, Jesus Christ, into the world because of the love. The last one I read, again, fits quite nicely into our theme of Father's Day. The Father sent the Son to be the saviour of the world. Perhaps that verse merits a little explanation. John, in his writings, calls God Father. The Lord Jesus, when he was here on earth for just those 30 or so years, when he prayed or spoke of God, he called him Father. Such was the relationship that the Lord Jesus had with God the Father. He called him Father. Now, we we might think of Father, Son in perhaps slightly different terms and we we must be careful not to uh, misunderstand the relationship between the Lord Jesus and God the Father. If I was to speak of my dad, I speak of him in terms as being the person that had a part to play in the creation of me. It's my dad. He's my father. And of course, we have a relationship because between him and my mum, I came into being. When we talk about the Father, God, and the Son, the Lord Jesus, it's not quite the same. Don't think of the Lord Jesus as having come from the Father in the sense that I came from my dad. It's not the same. The titles that they bear, father and son, are really to do with the relationship that they had with one another. For the son ever existed. The son is God. The father is God. The Holy Spirit is God. The Trinity. I can't explain it. I won't even try. But the Lord Jesus is God. He didn't have a point of beginning as I did as a son. He ever existed. He ever will exist. But the relationship that they had with one another, particularly shown here on earth, but it ever was, was that of father, son. But we read here with John's words that the father sent the son to be the saviour of the world. Some people might ask the question, why did Jesus, if he is God, we believe he is, come into the world? Here it is. John explains it three times over. He says to be the saviour of the world, to be the appeasement for our sins, to be so that we might live through him. That's why Jesus came. 
Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, another writer says in the Bible. The Lord Jesus, in his own words, says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, me, he was saying. So that in believing we might be saved. I just want to explain that concept of being saved, rescued, by means of a a parable that the Lord Jesus spoke. <laughs> it perhaps is the, the best parable to draw upon of the Lord Jesus is that speaks of a father-son relationship. If you want to read of it yourself, you'll find it in Luke chapter 15. And it's the story of the Lord Jesus that we call the prodigal son. Now, it actually is part of a suite of three stories, three parables. First of all, the Lord Jesus speaks of a, a, a lost sheep and how that the shepherd goes out to find this one of 100 that is lost. Such was his care, his love for the lost one. And then he tells a story of a lost coin, a woman who had 10 coins, loses one, but she searches diligently until she finds it. And when she does, she rejoices. And third, the third story is this of the prodigal son. And it tells the story of a man that had two sons. And the youngest of the sons goes to his father and asks for his inheritance early. <laughs> and the father graciously gives it. And the son, he goes off to a far country and he lives riotously, wastefully. That's what prodigal means, to be wasteful. And he just spends it all until he has nothing left and he finds himself in deep need. Away from his father's love. In need of some hope. There are all sorts of reasons why you may be here this afternoon, why you may be listening in. But one might be because you've come to a point in life where you realize that the things that you have and that you have enjoyed, they bring you no real deep pleasure, no real deep joy. That there's an emptiness to your, in your heart. That there's a grasping after there must be something more. I've just got it wrong. That's where that son was. And in, in coming to that point, you know, he ends up, in order to survive, he tries something else. Now, he likely is a Jew. And he ends himself in a, in, on a pig farm, feeding pigs, which, as, as far as their cord of life was concerned, would have been the lowest of the low, even to the point that he considers eating the pig's food. He couldn't get any lower. Maybe you're there. Looking for answers. Looking for love. Looking for peace. And he comes to a point of realization, and this is what the Bible says. These are the words of the Lord Jesus. When he came to himself, when, when all of the, 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 the rubbish of this world and all of, the, all of the bright lights have gone and when he came to himself, when he realized that there is more to life, he remembered that back home his father's servants had bread enough and to spare. Under the love and the care of his father, they had plenty. But he had nothing. For he perished with hunger. Now you may not be physically hungry. But in your soul, you may be starving this afternoon. 
hankering after something else, something more. And, and from that re realization, there came a resolve because this is what he says, I will arise and go to my father. Here's the turning point in his life. He has decided to return. He's going to leave everything that he thought he could find pleasure and joy and sustenance in. He's going to leave it behind because he found it empty and useless. And he's going to go and he's going to find God. Well, he's going to find his father. <laughs> the application is obvious. Maybe we are at that point, having come to realization that there is nothing, nothing that can fulfill us here in this life to uh, spiritually that we must come to God. I will arise and go to my father. He's got a story. He's got a, a, a confession to make. He, he plans it all out in his head. He says, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. And he was right. He brought shame upon the name of his household. We don't know what he got up to, but he didn't feel good about it. Didn't want to be called the son of his father any longer. He didn't deserve it, not one bit. He was right. Do we deserve the father's love? No. But he still loves us. So much that he sent his son for us. So much that his son, the Lord Jesus, bore our sins, our wrongs in his own body upon the tree. He died on our behalf. He died for us. Do we deserve it? No. And this is grace and love in action. He loved us because he loves us. Not because we deserve it. And this man, this, the, the, the son in the story, he's got his speech already. In his heart he has repented of all that he has done. And he makes his way back home. And there's a great reunion because the father's looking out for him. He sees him while the son is yet afar off. I'll tell you this. God's looking out for you. He's just waiting waiting for you to come to him. And the father, he arose, sorry, the, the, the son, he arose and he came to his father and his father saw him and he had compassion and he ran and fell upon his neck and kissed him. The father, the son, got out the first part of his repentance. The last part was that I'll be a servant in your household. The father didn't allow that to be said because he had compassion. He didn't wag the finger. He didn't tell him off. He didn't say, well, no, you went, you don't, you come back here. He welcomed him. His repentant son that he loved. God loves us. He will have us if we come to him. There was great rejoicing. Do you know what it goes on to say? Bring forth the best robe. Put a ring on his hand. Shoes on his feet. Let us eat and be merry. My son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. There was rejoicing when the lost sheep was found and when the lost coin was found and there's rejoicing when the lost son is found. And do you know, the Lord Jesus told this because... There is rejoicing in heaven when one who has distanced himself from God comes home. A father's love. God would have each of us come to him today. In the manner in which this son in the story came to his father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. We're not worthy, but we are welcomed. And coming repentant before God for those things that we have done, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, he will forgive, he will receive, and he will set aside those sins forever. A father's love. Shall we just pray?